Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. I'm gonna start with this EVA hard carry case. It has a rather strange shape, but this will fit one of these uh, budget label printers perfectly. And if you're like me, using the label printer just in the lab where everything is uh, clean, it might be perfectly fine to keep it in a drawer but at some point a friend asked me uh, to help him figure out the networking wires in a building uh, they were not marked at all uh, basically I had to identify every wire crimp it and install some networking gear well when you start doing stuff like that you need a carry case for your label printer because it's gonna get dirty there will be dust and grime and the LCD might get scratched you might want to toss this into your tools bag so that's when I decided to order one of these hard uh, carry cases they're fairly inexpensive so uh, well worth getting one and there's even a small pocket here where you could fit like a spare cartridge a higher priced printer might get you one by default from the manufacturer but for these discount $30 printers you can't really expect to get one of these uh, hard carry cases from the manufacturer so you need to order it separately before we go on with the next items let me mention the sponsor of this video pcbway.com is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Voldoc channel they even have a prototyping service for 3d printing cnc laser cutting injection molding so you could basically build a product entirely on their prototyping service check them out the link is in the description below Next up I have a bunch of one wire temperature sensors and each one of these uh, capsules should contain an 18B20 or a compatible one. Uh, it's, it is a one wire temperature sensor and the way they are potted inside these uh, uh, capsules should mean that they are waterproof. Now take that with a grain of salt as it will probably vary with quality and quality will greatly vary depending on where you source these and also between batches. I've ordered a bunch of uh, these uh, unterminated ones with uh, long cables. I think they're two meters long, but you can also opt to have them terminated either with a JST connector or a three and a half millimeter jack, which might be a good idea depending on your uh, project. I've also ordered from a different seller these blue ones, which were slightly more expensive. Their uh, capsules seem like a bit more rugged, they're slightly bigger and the wire is thicker, which gives me the sentiment that they are of uh, higher quality. But same as always, you will uh, find links to all of these items in the description below the video. And those are affiliate links, which means sometimes I do get a commission if you make a purchase after clicking the link. Before I move on with the next item, I would really appreciate if you would smash that like button. It only takes you a second to do it, but it really means a lot to me. Thank you. Next up, I got myself a network tester type of tool. So this is one of the newer models you can get on AliExpress and it can do the usual uh, RJ45, RJ11 network cable test uh, on wire by wire basis, but it can also do some tone injection to help you identify wiring or maybe even discover cables buried inside the wall. I've had one of the uh, basic network testers is this one for the past 15 or even more years and here it is it's been through a lot and I figured I could use the cable tracing capability of the newer ones. I would say that the most annoying thing about this is that they're still using a 9 volt battery to power them and you need two of them one inside this and one inside this unit. It's just annoying to find that you, new tools still need 9 volt batteries and not one but two build quality it's kind of average it's cheap plastic but nothing obviously wrong with it i mean for the cost of roughly 20 dollars uh, it's perfectly acceptable next i got myself a sample of one of these hexagon shaped felt tiles and they do come with adhesive backing and they're about 9 to 10 millimeters thick they come in a variety of colors and ultimately this is something you can use for interior design on a wall while at the same time benefiting from the uh, soundproofing properties of this rather thick felt these are fairly inexpensive so I wanted to check out the sample before deciding if I'm gonna order more I'm thinking of maybe using these in the new Vollog lab but I'll have to see about that uh, you know how the word goes as a married man I'll probably have to seek advice from my wife 
Next up, I have a bunch of these uh, fiber transmit and receive optical modules. Uh, these are plastic fibers, uh, probably TOSLink compatible, and I won't go into too much details with these as they will be showed in greater detail in a separate video, but the plan is to design some form of optical serial link which would support uh, UART, for example, and would allow sending instructions over this electrically insulated line between test equipment in uh, various scenarios where you might need the isolation. But like I said, more on this in a separate video, I will need to design the PCBs, order them, run some tests, and then I'll be able to do a video. These are some JST-SH pigtails, they're 6-pin and I use this on my Voglink USB to serial converter, which unfortunately I am currently unable to manufacture more. Lots of people signed up for purchasing them on my Tindy store, which I will link on screen right now, but unfortunately the CP2102N variant of the chip that I used in my design is not available due to the global chip shortage, so I either need to redesign that to use another chip or wait until the chip comes back in stock with the big distributors, but that's kind of crazy. Some of them code delivery times for 2022. Can you imagine waiting one year to get your chip? We're living some crazy times and I'm pretty sure that for some of these parts that are hard to find there is some kind of grey market trading happening where some clever people started hoarding these and they are now selling them twice as expensive or who knows, maybe even more to those willing to pay. Next up I got a piece of leather for fine sharpening of blades and this is typically called a strop and you need to use some kind of abrasive paste in combination with the leather strop and this will help you give that uh, final mirror finish on your sharp blade. Typically you'll want to attach this to some piece of wood so there is a flat surface to grind your blade ag against. The plan is for me to learn how to properly sharpen a knife and I think this is a pretty useful skill to master because everyone has some kitchen knives and who doesn't appreciate a good sharp kitchen knife. This also comes with a small puck of uh, this abrasive paste and you're supposed to rub some of this stuff on the strop and then start polishing the blade. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube, you won't be seeing any videos of me doing that, I'll probably do a terrible job anyway. Next I have a leather punch tool set with the different hole sizes and I don't plan to get started on yet another hobby like uh, building uh, leather wallets or something like that but there have been occasions where I needed to punch small round holes into various soft materials and I didn't have the proper punch tool to do it. This was pretty inexpensive for a set on AliExpress and with the rather low frequency that I will be using it I think it's not worth getting something of higher quality. This will probably do the job just fine for the rare occasion that I will be needing it. You will find the link for this set in the description below the video. Ever since I did uh, some testing on that uh, Xiaomi Type-C car charger, the one that uh, did power delivery up to 20 volts, 65 watts if I remember correctly, I wanted to try a different USB tester to see if maybe it can trigger or uh, support uh, some additional power delivery modes like programmable power supply mode which would allow you to step through the voltages in finer steps and I found this on uh, AliExpress uh, uh, the enclosure will have to be assembled uh, the module comes like this in an anti-static bag but the specs claim that this uh, supports programmable power supply mode which would probably allow you to step through the voltages um, like uh, I wanted to do in the testing of that charger. How good this is I will have to test and see. I'll probably do an update on the Xiaomi car charger or you'll see me use this in a future video and I'll let you know later how well this works. Next I got myself one of these fancy zinc selenide laser focusing lenses and this one in particular is uh, 20 millimeters in diameter with a focal length of 50.8 millimeter and I must say the seller of this product seems very professional at least in terms of packaging this was very well packed inside a lot of bubble wrap and it comes in this uh, plastic case with some protection foam so this traveled very safely and my plan is to use something like this to try and focus the image of a thermal camera like my Unity to be able to get clear close-up shots of the IR image because this uh, camera is typically designed to view uh, objects which are at least half a meter away but oftentimes during um, electronics work you need to get in there up close and 
really check which one of the components is getting hot on a PCB for example. And if you haven't seen my review video of the Unity thermal camera, I will link it on screen right now. I highly recommend you watch it if you're looking to get a new thermal camera. This has some very interesting specs for the money, but also some clear disadvantages over the more expensive models from uh, someone like FLIR. So everything is discussed in the review video. I don't know much about these uh, lenses and I kind of picked the focusing distance almost randomly uh, but I'm really eager to, to give this a quick try by manually uh, like holding the lens in front of the camera and see if I can get a clear image. Let me pause this for a moment and prepare uh, an experiment. So the experiment is pretty simple, it's the best I could pull together in such a short notice. But I have just a piece of wire here and I'm running 5 amps through that. And if we're trying to get an image of that with the thermal camera, uh, let me just zoom in. The resolution is not great, the focusing uh, on that point is not great. But just watch what happens when I slide this lens in front of the camera. So yeah, the image instantly turns very clear. It, it just focuses the image at this very short distance. So this could be really useful if I could design some kind of adapter and install this on the front. It would have to be an adjustable adapter so you can adjust the focusing distance. But yeah, it could really help such a basic uh, thermal camera to uh, get a view of uh, something up close. So this really works. And it's a good choice. Unfortunately, these are not very cheap lenses and I'm not even sure how you're supposed to care them. I'm not sure if they scratch easily or not. I've probably already scratched this one, but that's okay. I'll take better care next time. Next up, I got a different model of uh, aluminium syringe plunger. You know how I showed the uh, mechanic branded one uh, in the previous videos and I do have about three of these that I use around the workbench. Well, I saw this one, uh, which is like not branded or Flexmate is the brand. I'm not really sure. Uh, the model number is TE-051. And I thought I'd give this a try as well. And let's put the two together to see if there are any notable differences. So the design seems very similar, but the gray one it's just a little bit longer and I did notice this issue because while using one of these like uh, solder paste syringes when using this one you don't quite get all the way to the end of the syringe so a slightly longer plunger might help in in this case so it's it's great that we get more length on on this plunger otherwise these seem very very similar one to another and I suppose it's also made from uh, anodized aluminium. In terms of cost, the gray one is about $1 cheaper than the mechanic branded one. And $1 might not seem like a big difference, but when the whole thing costs $2, that's a massive price difference. So I'll drop a link to this one as well in the description if you'd like to order this cheaper one. This is a set of cloth tea bags and I thought this would be a good method for storing various desiccant beads inside my bin with 3D printing filament. As you may know 3D printing filament is uh, hygroscopic which means it will absorb water at which uh, point it starts to create problems when it's heating uh, inside the 3D printer hot nozzle. So when you store it you need to make sure it stays inside the container with a very low humidity. I use desiccant beads to control the humidity but those get saturated with moisture so you either need to replace them or bake them and I believe these uh, tea bags will help keep the beads in one place while at the same time uh, the humidity can freely pass through them. And the last item in today's video is this assortment of threaded screws, mainly very small sizes ranging from M1 up to M1.7 uh, with lengths between 3 and 6 millimeters. These should come in handy when uh, repairing various uh, gadgets which might use such small screws or for attaching small stuff inside the 3D printed enclosures. Uh, I'm glad to see that the seller is taking care and it's putting this piece of foam in here to prevent the screws from mixing with uh, each other compartment. Same as always, you will find the link for all of the items shown in the video in the description below. This was all for today and given the variety of items shown in this video it would be hard not to find something interesting to order so I'm sorry once again if this video affected your account balance. 
If you'd like to support the channel to continue making videos like this one, you can do so on Patreon with as little as $1 per month and if you'd like to watch some of my previous mailbag videos, I will add a playlist on screen. Right now there are over 100 mailbag videos in that playlist. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.